In this video from Sharper, we're taking a look at assigning different tax rates to your sales categories or departments on the XCA 202, 212 and 301 registers. Uh, so first I'm going to do a bit of an explanation of the manual. If you've got the manual to hand, it's pages 27 and 28 are crucial. Um, so in my previous video you've seen that I've set up tax rate 1 to be 20%, tax rate 2 at 5%. As default in, on the machine, if you look in the manual or in the programming settings on the till, you'll see that all the departments are preset to um, tax rate one. So obviously we've set up multiple tax rates, so we need to go in and make sure that each sales department has got its different tax rate applied. Um, so there's, there's kind of two halves to the problem. Uh, the most complicated bit, which everyone struggles with, is the deciding what your status is. Um, so the issue with these machines is that you're not, when you do the st department status programming, you're not just choosing the tax rate for the department, you're actually setting a lot of other different things. So and the stand, if you're programming departments 1 to 16 and looking at pages 27 of the manual, um, kind of the easy bit is the second half where you're pressing, this is my crib sheet version of the manual. So in, if you haven't got a copy of the manual, what it says is to enter the programming for departments 1 to 16 you type in a status status of um, eight characters I think it is one two three four five six seven eight eight digits then you press the multiply button followed by the department and then TLNS obviously this bit's fairly straightforward um, if you're doing departments 17 to 32 and 33 to 50 the process is slightly different but you still have to enter the status for the uh, department a lot of people don't understand what the status is, what, what all the A to B, C's and everything refers to. And basically it refers to a grid or a chart that's on the next page of the manual, page 28. Um, I'm going to try and break it down, make it simple, which is what I've tried to do here. Um, so the eight digits you enter, mine are going to end up like this, but how I've got to this is that Digit A, the first digit, is relating to tax rate 4. So if you want tax rate 4 to, to apply to the department that you're programming, you would set that to 1. I don't, so mine's at 0. It's the same for B, which is tax rate 3. You set it to 0 if you don't want tax rate 3 to apply to that department, or 1 if you do. Now, because my machine's got two tax rates on it, these ones are marked as optional, so it makes it easy for me when I come to do my programming. Um, that tax rate two, if tax rate two applies, I type in one there or zero if it doesn't, and then the same again with tax rate one. So the first four numbers you enter are to do with the tax rates, and they're all going to be zeros or one. In fact, you can have three zeros and one one, the one telling it which tax rate to apply. Your fifth digit you enter is whether your item is a single item cash sale or normal. I mean, 99.9% .9 of people are just going to have normal, so that's going to be zero. Positive or negative is the next digit. So obviously if it's a normal sales department, you can have it set to be positive, which is zero. You would have a negative department if you were using it perhaps for refunds or redem uh, gift voucher redemptions or uh, bottle positive bottle deposit returns, that sort of thing. So obviously that's quite unusual, so we're going to stick with standard programming. So that's going to be a zero to be positive. The one that you might use is entry limit. I'm, I'm, as default, it's set to eight. So this is where you limit the amount of um, the value of a sale that can be put through a specific department. Um, obviously we can look at that separately in a different video. Um, and then price entry, the last one. Um, so if your items, if this is a retail machine and your departments don't have preset prices, then you're always going to have this set to one, which is open only. If you're having presets, any preset departments need to be set to two. So using that chart, and which is my version of the one in the manual, I've got two different statuses that I'll be typing into the departments, um, which are virtually the same. It's just that my ones that are going to be tax rate one are like this, so three zeros one zero zero eight one, and then the bottom one for tax rate two is going to be zero zero one zero 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 eight one. Okay. Hopefully by the end of the video and looking at the manual, that that'll make sense. Obviously, the key thing for our point of view is that we're just demonstrating how to apply tax rates to different departments. We can look at the other features um, at a later time. So I'll try to take a, a standard view of how someone would would have the machine set up. Um, 
So yeah, let's let's do it and it should make sense. So we've got the key round to the PGM position already. Um, just press a button to wake it up. So if I want to program department one to have tax rate one, I'm going to follow the chart up here. So I'm going to be typing the status in to start with. Um, so my status for tax rate one is, can I leave that up there? Yes. One, two, three zeros. One because it's tax rate one. Zero, zero, eight, one. And then I'm looking back up here and it's the multiply key. Then it's the department number, in this case number one. And then the TLNS button to save it. Which move that out of the way. So we get a little printout saying department one, tax rate one. We can actually prove the point if we just very quickly turn the key around to the reg position and pop one pound through department one, cash that off. We're now getting some tax information here on the receipt. You can probably see that it's one pound because my tax here is set to be inclusive. The one pound is the total, so I've got 83p net, 17p, 17p VAT. So if you add 20% onto 83, you get to your pound. So that's worked correctly. So we'll go back to the reg, uh, sorry, the PGM mode, and we'll now set department two to be uh, the second tax rate. So I'm going to be entering this status for that department. So it's key round to PGM. Status 00100081. Then the multiply button. Then my department button. And then TLNS to save it. So that's, we get a little printout again. We'll just have a look at that. So you can check that you're getting the same. Department 2, tax 2. Okay, now the only way it gets a little bit more complicated, obviously now we now know our status, so on my machine I've only typed it in two different statuses, so I can now apply that to all my departments along here. If, I, if you're using department 17 to 32, it's slightly different. You type in the status first. Then you press the multiply button. Then you press the department shift button here. So and then you press the appropriate department key. So for department 32, you now press this one and then TLNS to save. We've got department 32, tax rate one. And I'll just show you the final, the other variants you can do if you're using departments 33 to 50. So this line here, so they're obviously not covered by the normal buttons. You type in the number of the department first. So for example, department 40, type in 40, then you hit depth hash, then you type in the status, so let's do tax rate 2, so that's our one here, 00100081. Um, status, then the multiply button, and then TLNS. And then we get our printout showing the department 4 set to tax rate 2. Okay, I've tried to cover as many different variants of the tax programming as possible in that video, but obviously I don't want to bang on too long. Uh, but so to, in summary, obviously the most the crucial thing to explain is that the tax rate is absolutely crucial to make sure you've got your correct um, tax settings applied to various departments. The one thing I haven't shown you is if you've got perhaps maybe you've got tax rate three set to zero, then obviously you need to apply that to any um, departments that aren't. Um, having any tax applied to them or you could actually enter all zeros. In fact I'll quickly show you how to do that. Um, if we go back to PGM we'll, see, we'll use department 10 and we're going to have this as say our bread department so there's no tax applied to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 1, multiply, department 10, um, TLNS, appreciate I went quite fast then but obviously you can and pause it and re-watch it. Key back to reg and then we've got department 10 with no tax settings. If we now sell a pound through department 10, a pound through department 2 and a pound through our department 1, I think they cover our three different tax settings. So you can see here on this receipt that's printed out, department 10 is a pound, department 2 is a pound, department 1 is a pound, I've got a subtotal of three pound Tax one is set is a pound because I've only sold a pound from a tax one department, which was department one. So that's got the 17p and the 83p, which I've previously explained. And then my tax two total is a pound, with the tax being uh, net 95p and 5p tax. So the, the bread department has no tax on it. Obviously, it looks better when you've got your de 
department descriptions programmed in as well so it makes a bit more sense to you okay so i hope that's covered everything obviously on these machines the, the department status programming can be quite tricky so you've got to be careful if you want to apply say the um entry limit of the buttons you've got to you can't just go back and change that to five for example and forget all this type of stuff you have to go back in and make sure that you you choose the correct statuses for all of those so i hope that's made sense if you've got any questions you can message us through youtube uh, or there's more information at sharphelp.co.uk where you can also download the manual which will be useful on on this sort of programming and you can also subscribe to this youtube channel and we'll, we'll keep posting more videos to help you guys out Okay, thanks very much for watching.